Welcome to the next video lecture. In this uh, lecture, we'll look at waves and diffraction. This is followed along in section 17.3 in your textbook. So please make sure to read this section because there's a lot of extra pictures and stuff in there that, that are not here in these uh, notes. But hopefully this is helpful to you in understanding a little bit more properties of how we hear things and see things. Diffraction is the bending of a wave uh, around another object. When we think of a particle, a particle can really only travel in a straight line. Yes, you can apply a force and it can move in an overall path, but it can't ever just like curve randomly without um, another for without a force being applied to it. Whereas a wave, what happens when it moves around a through an opening or something like that? It doesn't just continue in a straight line, but it bends out and kind of disperses a little bit. You could say, or I mean, that probably is not the correct terminology, but it bends out around the surroundings. This is why you have you can see light. Um, around in the whole room instead of at a path like around the corner even if the light is um, around the corner of a hallway it bends around the corner this is why you can hear sound further down I think I think it, through a doorway or something underneath the doorway it bends around through that opening there so this is what you have on um, this if this bending or whatever depends on the wavelength and the opening too so we'll talk about the more mathematical aspects in a second Here's an example of water waves, so a wave that travels through a medium here um, and how it diffracts around some opening. So you have the water waves coming in between these two islands here, and you kind of have that spreading out, and you can kind of see right in the middle of the picture that spreading out of the waves and how they uh, kind of form that circular path. So that's an example of this fraction. And this actually has pretty serious impacts along uh, coastlines where you have jetties or um, big stone structures or any kind of man-made things. Uh, because what happens is along natural, uh, there's natural erosion along any beaches or in any harbors or anything like that. And when you build something permanent around a harbor or something like a, a jetty or if it's a big stone structure to break the waves going out, what you actually happen is uh, the currents and the different waves will diffract around that. And so they'll erode more of one side than the other. This is particularly worrisome around uh, in New Jersey where they built a ton of uh, these stone jetties to kind of limit the waves crashing into the beach. Now the beaches are a lot are all being eroded much faster. Um, this also is pretty serious down in uh, the areas around the Carolinas, so North and South Carolina, the beaches and um, that area, those sandbars down there. As you build things, the waves will diffract around there, and that causes more and faster erosion. So for a straight opening or a slit, actually, is what we talk about here. Um, we have a certain, uh, the width of that opening. Um, this is just for a straight, like kind of a rectangular side thing. The um, angle that corresponds to the first minimum, or in this case, the, the, what happens is you get a diffraction pattern uh, by the waves that corresponds to an area of co uh, constructive interference and destructive interference. Um, the first minimum, which would be destructive interference, of the light waves as they diffract through an opening um, or sound waves or anything like that occurs. The sine of that angle is equal to the wavelength divided by the opening distance, so that slit width distance. Um, and from this, you can kind of see in the drawing here, the angle is from the middle point there, so that's how far out. And that's where you get that first minimum. So it's, And this pertains a lot with light. We'll see that again when we get to Chapter 24 and when we look at speakers in just a second. So for a circular opening, the, it's slightly different, the equation, the idea here. Um, and this is because uh, you have a kind of a greater angle, greater dispersion, a little bit more interference between multiple different waves. The, before we had a square or rectangular opening for the slit width. Now with it, we have here, um, and this generally pertains to speakers. And what I'll do is I'll show you some speakers tomorrow in class, and we'll talk about that. Um, what we have here... Uh, sine of the angle, and this is the angle that relates to the first minimum of the sound. It depends on the wavelength and, and the, the diameter of the opening. Once again, same idea. Um, but the idea here, there's a different thing. There's a, um, a constant in front of it, 1.22, which is due to the fact that it's a circle and there's some radiance and there's a different uh, interference pattern involved with that. I'm not going to go into the, the math behind this. It's very 
very tricky that even like I have trouble stay, uh, understanding fully how to get there, but it has to do with, uh, it, it's rooted in a number of radians that it pertains to in the interference pattern with that. So this is just the idea here. And if you get the, if you kind of look at the picture, you have a higher frequency. A higher frequency means a shorter wavelength. This means a smaller angle. A lower frequency has a larger wavelength. This means it will actually be able to disper diffract more and kind of spread out more. So this is, goes a lot into the design of speakers. It has a lot of particular things about what type of sound you're trying to produce. All right, a couple of quick review questions um, just to go over the video. First, I want you to list as many different types of waves or kind of waves that can diffract. Second, uh, does a minima, the angle that we are calculating, that, that angle, does that correspond to an area of constructive or destructive interference? You can find this either earlier on in the video or in the textbook. And why does a lower frequency have a wider dispersion angle or diffraction angle? Excuse me. Why does the lower frequency have a wider diffraction angle? Thank you very much. Have a good night. See you tomorrow in class.